Today's date is August 9th. Just a few short days after we witnessed two mass shootings in Texas and Ohio within 24 hours of one another. August 3rd, a gunman who will not be named because they do not deserve the notoriety, massacred 22 people and injured 24. The incident took place in a Walmart in El Paso, Texas. The following day on August 4th, a gunman who will also not be named killed nine people and injured 27. This took place early Sunday outside of a bar in Dayton, Ohio. And all of this has once again stirred up conversations about gun control. This is more than just an analytical or philosophical debate. People are in pain. One side calling for a ban on all guns and the other holding their ground, supporting the right for all U.S. citizens to bear arms. And the tussle begins, no side wanting to give in to the other. But the issue with all of this is that they're not seeing the big picture. The media and everyone out there seem to be talking about the object of threat, guns in this case, rather than discussing the source of the threat, mental health, or more specifically, a lack of mental health, mental sickness. What we fail to see is that our society and the world as a whole has become more and more unstable in recent years. Technology is like never before. What we're able to do and accomplish today would have been considered magic in the past. But amidst all of this technological advancement, we've seen a regression in our happiness. School shootings and mass shootings as a whole are more common than ever before in history, particularly here in the United States. It's become a tragedy. And yes, the ease of access to guns does have something to do with these recurring shootings, but that's not where the answer to this problem lies. No, not entirely. The answer lies in shifting our views and beliefs on mental health. It will require us as a society to finally see mental health as what it truly is, a serious problem that must be taken seriously. Far too little attention is paid to the teenager who deals with anger or bouts of depression. If that same teenager showed up with a broken arm, we would all agree that they needed to go to the hospital right away. It's a shame, but there is a reason why it is this way. For one, it's much harder to see mental issues than it is to see physical issues. Mental issues are more nuanced and it requires us to be more aware of one another. We can see a broken bone, but we can't see a depressed mind. Especially if the person who carries that mind knows how to hide their pain. Secondly, it's been the norm for so long. Psychology as a whole is only roughly 150 years old. Prior to that, mental issues weren't really seen as real problems. Unless you were very obviously mentally challenged, that in many people's eyes, you didn't deal with mental issues. In fact, mental health wasn't even a term that people used. And that idea has continued into the present day. Unless you have schizophrenia or dissociative identity disorder, then most people don't take mental health issues seriously. And finally, most people don't understand their own emotions. So how could they ever understand someone else's? The majority of us rarely ever sit down and think through our emotions. Our anger, our frustration, our sadness, our joy, and our happiness. We simply feel what we feel in any given moment, unaware of how to manage it. Constantly being swayed by different stimuli that either make us feel good or make us feel bad. And this leads me to the major point of this video. In order for us to stop these mass shootings, then people need to become aware of their mental health and they need to learn how to help themselves. Even if we make regular visits to a professional, we must know how to help ourselves when we're alone. And this must start in our schools from day one. Just as we teach math, science, and history, we must teach mental health. Our children must learn how to overcome depression, how to deal with their anger, what to do with jealousy and how to quell anxiety. And they must learn how to enjoy excitement in a positive way, not to cling to it, 
during the inevitable return to neutrality. You see, it's things like this that our children will be able to take with them throughout their entire lives to help them through the inevitable challenges that they will face. Unlike long division and learning to differentiate between the different types of dinosaurs, understanding mental health can not only help you through times of struggle, but it can also teach you to help others. How many friends and family members of these shooters noticed them acting abnormally prior to their heinous acts? Many. Many have come out and admitted that they were worried that something bad would happen if the perpetrators didn't get help. And unfortunately for many of these people, they tried to warn authorities but to no avail. They were simply brushed off, and this ultimately led to the deaths of innocent people. But had those authorities understood mental health and seen it for what it is, then maybe some of these shootings could have been avoided. The rhetoric on mental health must change now before it's too late. And unlike the many useless things that we teach our children in school here in the United States, one important notion is the motto, united we stand, divided we fall. We must stand together against mass shootings to solve this issue once and for all. Because if we fail, it could be our demise.